yeah, I found this quote. It is from the book The Unbearable Lightness of Being and it is written by Milan Kundera. So this book uh, talks about how Czechoslovakia, the communist state of Soviet Union, of the Soviet Union, yep, and it shows the experiences of uh, people during that uh, era where it was a police state. And uh, it wasn't necessarily nice, but it really shows, uh, it really brings out the experiences of them during that time. But in any case, the quote is, when the heart speaks, the mind finds it indecent to object. And this quote, obviously, it has an emotional reference of the heart, not really pertaining to our biology term, where the heart is the organ that never rests. So we will dive more into that, okay, how the heart does not rest at all, we will go through its structure, the heart cycle, and last but not least, the coronary heart disease. Okay, this is the heart structure, and the first thing you should do is not look at your textbook at all, because that is really, really complicated, uh, and it has a lot of words, it doesn't really make sense, so uh, how I would do it is that I will go through with you how the blood flows in your heart and then I will link the heart structures uh, accordingly okay? and that would be much simpler so first in your heart uh, blood always starts from your right atrium through your superior and inferior vena cava okay? so deoxygenated blood goes through first into the right atrium followed by the right ventricle where it will where the ventricular muscles will contract and push the blood into your pulmonary artery. So artery meaning blood vessel away from the heart and pulmonary meaning lung. So pulmonary artery, blood that flows into the lung away from the heart. Okay? And after that, it will, and after that, after being oxygenated, your pulmonary vein will bring back the blood from the heart from the lung. And it will go through the left atrium followed by your left ventricle which will be pushed all the way up into your aorta and then to other parts of the body all right yeah so some things to take note is that uh, you must know what are the names of your valve are. so pulmonary valve and your aortic valve okay you can just call them semilunar valves all right in your O-level syllabus, uh, that's fine. All right, because of the shape, uh, you can just call it that. Okay, but the ones that you must differentiate is your mitral or your bicuspid valve and your tricuspid valve. All right, so your tricuspid will be in your right ventricle, and your bicuspid will be in your uh, left ventricle. Okay, and you have these small fibrous strands known as chordae tendineae. And these things uh, help to prevent uh, flipping, uh, back flipping of your valves due to ventricular pressure. Okay, you don't want that. You want you you wouldn't want your blood to backflow at all. That is uh, that's not really that great. All right. So some things to take note is that your blood always flows always flows from your atrium to the ventricle. Okay, that is the most important valves open due to pressure so it doesn't make sense when your pressure is lower on one side compared to the other and the valves uh, open all right the pressure is always higher on the one that wants to push the valves open okay so do take note on that that will be more important in our heart cycle and lastly our left ventricle is stronger because the, that ventricle is the one responsible for pushing blood to all parts of the body and that is it for heart structure okay welcome to the heart cycle this is the most tedious and annoying part and the most annoying part of the whole chapter transport in humans and also this is the most uh, common exam question and I've I've always seen it in past exam papers so you do have to know what is happening in uh, this uh, series of pressure graphs alright so just to take note that uh, this graph happens in the left side of the heart so it happens in your aorta your left ventricle as well as your uh, left atrium 
and uh, they depict the series of pressures for your left side of the heart okay now this graph looks uh, complicated at first but don't worry after a while it's going to be fine because there are some explanations to why the graph looks like that so with exp with some explanation it's going to uh, make more sense so don't worry about that now first your atrium okay it has blood flowing into it first remember that the blood flows into the atrium followed by the ventricle okay so and hence your atrium should have a higher pressure compared to your ventricle because blood flows into your atrium first all right and after a while your atrial muscles will contract it will push blood okay it will have a higher pressure it will force blood into your ventricle right and it will slowly dip back down because it does not have enough blood anymore and at this stage all right your aortic valves close all right and what happens is that there are two things that will happen your ventricular muscles are contracting here so there are two things that happen your ventricular pressure will shoot up really high and your atrial pressure will shoot up slightly as well so your ventricular pressure shooting up is quite straightforward this is because your ventricular muscles are contracting the volume is really low all right and is uh, it's quite self-explanatory that your ventricular pressure will increase pretty high but what about the atrial pressure so this sudden sharp increase then a dip is due to the sudden force of the ventricular muscles it forces uh, it, it has a really big force on the blood so it will actually push on the bicuspid valves all right it will actually push on the bicuspid valves and there's a and there will be a sudden uh, change in volume in your atrium and therefore your atrial pressure suddenly sh uh, sharply increases and uh, and of course that sudden force does not uh, stay forever and hence it will drop back down okay so your atrium will go back to normal after a while right and your atrial pressure will slowly increase because blood is constantly flowing into your atrium all right so for your ventricle your ventricular pressure after a while it's going to be higher than your aortic pressure so remember that valves open and close due to pressure differences right so once your ventricular pressure is higher than your aortic pressure the semilunar valves open and what happens is blood will start to flow in and therefore your aortic and ventricular pressure should increase at the same time as well and after a while there is not enough blood to be pumped it will slowly dip back down and hence your semilunar valves will close back because your aorta has a higher pressure than the ventricle it is not going to allow a backflow of blood alright that's how the valves work so uh, at this stage there is a slight increase in pressure this is due to the shape of the aorta it is in the form of an arch so there will be some backflow of blood causing the pressure to increase that is why there is a short increase in uh, pressure which will continue to dip back down because it is flowing away from the aorta okay so if ventricular pressure uh, sharply declines it goes all the way here and after a while it will drop lower than the atrial pressure so this allows the uh, blood from the atrium to flow in uh, this is where your bicuspid valves open right so the blood flows in and obviously uh, your atrial pressure will dip back down as well and because the ventricle has a very large volume any increase in blood from the atrium is probably not going to increase in pressure as well so it will continue to dip back down as well all right so at this uh, low pressure stage it is caused by i mean it is of low pressure because the blood is not exerting any force onto the walls of the atrium or the ventricle because there is not enough blood in the chambers all right so the blood will continue to fill up here and from here the cycle will repeat so that is the heart cycle it is not too difficult it's not too complicated after some explanation 
and what I'm, and just to recap heart cycle always starts on the luck sound of the heart so when the ventricular muscles contract also known as ventricular systole happens when this happens your heart cycle uh, is considered to be starting here okay so heart cycle starts here therefore you have your lap sound which is due to your ventricular muscles contracting right and after a while it will go up go back down what happens is that your ventricular muscles uh, stop uh, stop contracting it will relax and it will go back to its original shape therefore you have a dub sound okay next uh, again pressure follows valve activity so when you see that the valves uh, close or when the valves open it is due to the pressure difference okay so remember that if you want your valves to be open there should be a region of higher pressure to a lower pressure all right your atrium should have a higher pressure than your ventricular pressure all right that is how your valves will open same goes for your aorta and your ventricles all right yeah and as i said before your duct sound ends uh, ventricular systole right is the it marks the end of the ventricular systole because your ventricle muscles uh, are starting to relax again right and when your ventricular muscles are relaxed it is known as ventricular diastole and that should be it for the heart cycle and with the heart cycle gone this uh, this marks the end of the most tedious part of the chapter and now we can move on to a more easier part of the chapter which is the coronary heart disease okay this disease is very rampant in developing nations or newly developed nations such as our country singapore so since our country has uh, has seen a very rapid growth in economy that would mean that our diets would uh, would change uh, pretty quickly over the last couple of years and therefore our our elderly our more senior generations have uh, problems like this because during their time uh, diets are not really restricted they are more catered for energy because uh, m uh, their, their purchasing power is not as strong as uh, currently right now right so uh, coronary heart disease in biology is basically due to low density cholesterol deposits or bad cholesterol deposits all right so what this does is that after a while uh, your low density cholesterol from your fatty foods will start to accumulate and uh, fill up your coronary heart arteries your, your coronary arteries right and it will start to block your lumen all right and uh, usually it only occurs up to this stage but uh, if if you're not careful it can occur up to this where it's very 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 dangerous Right. So again, uh, coronary heart disease uh, caused by low density cholesterol deposits, and this low density cholesterol is found more in saturated fat. All right. So what you should do is uh, cut down saturated fat. You know, cut down margarine, cut down uh, some form of uh, some forms of butter. Uh, use olive oil. Use unsaturated fat. That would decrease the risk of coronary heart disease. And last but not least, uh, as, as I said, eat less oily or fried foods. That would help in tackling this disease. Okay, And this marks the end of our lesson. Okay. Good luck for your exams. Uh, I hope this video helps and uh, do stay safe.